The Electric Universe Theory presents a radical reimagining of the cosmos, proposing that electricity, not gravity alone, plays the dominant role in shaping the universe. Rather than attributing planetary formation, weather systems or geological shifts solely to slow, uniform processes, this model emphasises rapid, high-energy electrical interactions between celestial bodies. Ancient mythology, worldwide, plasma physics and puzzling geological formations are evidenced of a forgotten cosmic drama that once played out in Earth's skies and on our planet. Central to the Electric Universe view is the idea that Earth's past was marked by intense cosmic electrical discharges. What the Thunderbolts team, including David Talbot and Wallace Formhall, describe as plasma interactions between planets when they came into near contact in the recent past. These events were recorded in mythologies across the world as battles of the gods, dragons, or thunderous sky events. They were in fact visual and physical manifestations of electrical arcs and plasma exchanges in a chaotic ancient solar system. Through this lens, it questions mainstream Ice Age narratives. And of course, the conventional model holds that massive, multi-ton boulders found scattered across plains called glacial erratics were transported vast distances by slow-moving glaciers over tens of thousands of years. However, from the Electric Universe perspective, such an explanation appears insufficient. Instead, these boulders may have been ejected skyward in a molten or semi-molten plasma state during catastrophic planetary discharges. These plasma thunderbolts could have hurled debris through the atmosphere before they cooled and landed in seemingly impossible locations, far from any known mountain sources. The idea is not merely poetic. Plasma physics demonstrates that material can be ionised, suspended and accelerated in electromagnetic fields to tremendous speeds. Hypersonic winds a likely product of such planetary scale electrical interactions could easily sculpt mountain ranges and vaporise rock layers with precision. What the Electric Universe proponents call electric machining. Features like the Ritchat structure in Mauritania, sometimes dubbed the Eye of the Sahara, may not be simple uplifted geological domes or eroded circular ridges but scars of massive plasma strikes potentially linked to these cataclysmic events. Further support for this idea comes from striking similarities between certain geological formations. The basalt columns of the Shetland Islands volcanoes mirror those found at the Giant's Causeway in Ireland, hexagonal pillars formed in a way that defies slow cooling models. Instead. These may be residues of rapid high energy plasma events that cause rock to soften, organise along electromagnetic field lines and solidify into the patterned structures we see today. And it also reframes questions about global deluges, mountain uplift and sudden climate changes. Myths, the mythology from every continent speaks of lightning gods cosmic battles and worlds set afire. These are not primitive imaginings, but cultural memories of planetary events involving Venus, Mars and Saturn, celestial bodies that according to the theory once loomed large in Earth's sky, connected by glowing plasma tails, terrifyingly close and violently active. The Electric Universe theory, this invites us to reconsider the quiet linear timeline of geological and cosmic history, and instead it proposes a dynamic, volatile past shaped not just by plate tectonics and erosion, but by vast cosmic discharges, planetary rearrangements and plasma events that reshape planet Earth in moments rather than millennia. Whether the mainstream will eventually embrace this idea 
remains to be seen. But for those exploring ancient mysteries and alternative science, the electric universe lights up the past in a whole new way. Located in Mauritania, West Africa, the Ritchat structure, the Eye of the Sahara, this is a massive concentric formation, 25 miles across, visible even from space. In standard geology, it is described as a symmetrical eroded dome with layers of rock exposed in a circular pattern due to uplift and erosion over millions of years. But under the Electric Universe model, the Ritchat structure becomes something entirely different, a plasma-generated scar created in a matter of hours or days, not millions of years. This is electric machining of the Earth's surface. In laboratory plasma experiments, when a high voltage electric discharge hits a solid surface, it creates patterns almost identical to what we see at the Ritchat structure. Concentric circles formed from rotating plasma arcs, central peaks and depressions from focused discharge energy, and raised rims from melted, vaporised material being blasted outward. The Ritchat structure's symmetry, the lack of clear tectonic association, and the location in a desert with no consistent erosion pattern, this all aligns very well with a rotating Birkeland current, which is an electromagnetic vortex filament striking the Earth's surface. Behaving like a cosmic drill, spinning and etching the circular structure into the rock, melting some parts and vaporising others. There are even faint radial discharge lines stretching away from the Ritchat structure, possible signatures of escaping electric currents. The Ritchat structure may have formed in a single catastrophic event and not over millions of years, and this event may have occurred during the late Pleistocene or early Holocene, potentially aligning with global myths of cataclysm 12,000 years ago. And this is linked to the same time frame as the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis, the Usolo horizon and the plasma cataclysm theory, where Earth was bombarded by cometary debris or experienced near passages with other planetary bodies like Mars and Venus in unstable orbits. The Ritchat structure may also have a mythological footprint. Some have speculated it could be the real-world inspiration for Plato's Atlantis, given its size, its shape and isolated geography. While speculative, it's fascinating how ancient stories of cities lost to fire and water echo plasma-generated catastrophes and massive flooding. In a plasma cataclysm model, a near pass of planet Mars or planet Venus might have sent electromagnetic discharges all across this planet's surface. The Sahara region, once lush, could have been flash fried or electrically drained, turning fertile lands into desert. The massive displacement of water and atmosphere could have led to ancient floods, tsunamis and abrupt climate changes. And while this remains a fringe theory in mainstream science, there are some areas that invite deeper study. For example, the lack of expected impact debris or volcanic material in the Ritchat structure. Similar structures found on Mars and other moons, and this suggests a non-tectonic, perhaps electromagnetic origin and geological anomalies like fused quartz, magnetic disturbances and layered ejecta around other suspected plasma impact sites. Is the Ritchat structure and the Uslo horizon evidence that our world, planet Earth, was once flash fried or electrically drained, turning fertile lands into deserts? If Earth, Venus and Mars were once aligned in harmony, referred to as the Golden Age. This is a time ruled by Kronos, the planet Saturn. And when Zeus, the planet Jupiter, waged war with Kronos, the Golden Age was lost and the solar configuration fell apart to what we see today. The Golden Age was lost, as spelled out 
in memories and mythology from every ancient culture on this planet.